Alrighty, welcome to chapter one of Fundamentals of Nursing. So to begin, we're going to begin talking about the historical perspectives on nursing. So throughout history, caregivers have evolved in their roles, um, not only in their roles, but also in their settings and in their responsibilities. In this first section, we're going to discuss these changes. And don't forget to stick around after this section for a quick um, English style quiz on this information. In early civilizations, it was believed that illnesses had a supernatural cause. Um, so there was the theory of animism, which attributed changes in bodily functions to invisible forces in nature. So good spirits were believed to bring good health, while evil spirits were thought to bring sickness and death. So the healthcare provider in eight early civilizations were was often referred to as the medicine man. Um, this healthcare provider, this medicine man, treated diseases using methods like chanting or um, trepanation, which is when they open the skull. Um, on the other hand, nursing was usually carried out by mothers, and these mothers would provide physical care and herbal remedies for their sick family members. Leon, let's talk about medicine in ancient Greek, in the ancient Greek civilization. So as the ancient Greek civilizations progressed, temples became central to medical care. This was because they believed that illnesses were a result of sins and as a result of the displeasure of the gods. In fact, the term disease actually originated for them from them and the word literally means the absence of ease. At the same time, we have the ancient Hebrews. So this is going on around the same time as the ancient Greeks. The ancient Hebrews were also developing their own views. Um, the ancient Hebrews framed their guidelines for ethical human behavior, for mental health, and for disease control through the Ten Commandments and through the Mosaic Health Code. So during this time, though, they had nurses who would provide care in home and um, within the community. These nurses would also serve as midwives. Now, let's move forward in history a bit. And as we move forward, we get to the early Christians. Um, in the early Christian period, nurses started to play a more structured role in society. So women within the Christian church, known as dignesses, um, would, would um, organize visits to the sick, while the male um, members would provide nursing care and attend to taking care of um, the dead. Now, as the Crusades began, though, in the early 11th century, all the way up to the 13th century, um, male and female nursing orders were officially established. Um, this led to the construction of um, hospitals, specifically for pilgrims. And pilgrims were the people who had chosen to answer the Catholic Church's um, summons to holy wars. So they started building hospitals specifically to take care of these pilgrims. And as a result of this, nursing emerged as a well-respected profession. Now, although the Middle Ages, this period of time, ended in chaos and upheaval, nursing had found its purpose and it's found its direction um, during this time. Now, by the start of the 16th century, though, we saw Western societies transitioning from a religious-centric view of nursing and of everything really to a more uh, to be more focused on war warfare exploration and knowledge expansion so in fact at this time religious many religious institutions like monasteries and convents they were being shut down which caused a significant shortage in the number of caregivers available for the sick 
So as a result, they started having women who were convicted of crimes. They started enlisting them into nursing roles as on as an alternative to being imprisoned. Um, these nurses, unfortunately, they were seen in a very negative light. They received very meager wages, and they were they had to work long, long, long hours in unfavorable um, conditions. Okay. So we are now at the quiz. I will give you a moment. I'm going to read the question and then please pause the video and answer the question. So a nursing student is presenting on the history of nursing. Which statement by the nurse, by the student indicates an understanding of the early beliefs about the causes of illness? Take your time. Pick your answer. And I will now tell you the answer in five, four, three, two, one. Make sure to pause if you don't want to hear the answer yet. Okay, the answer is B. Early civilizations thought illnesses stemmed from supernatural causes. And if you remember um, back to our presentation, back to what we just learned, most early civilizations believed that illnesses had supernatural causes. On to the second question. A nursing instructor asks a student about the role of a mother in early civilizations. Which response by the student is correct? Please pause the video and pick your answer. And I'll tell you the answer in five, four, Three, two, one. And the answer is C. Mothers typically cared for their families by providing physical care and herbal remedies. Remember that the role of nursing, the nursing role in early civilizations was usually undertaken by the mother who would care for her family by providing those, um, that, that physical care and that herbal, those herbal remedies. Okay. So moving on to the next session. In this next section, we are going to discuss um, Florence Nightingale and the birth of modern nursing. And again, stick around for a quick Enclus style quiz on this on the information we're about to cover. But just to give you a little bit of context for what we're about to discuss, you need to know that um, we're going to be talking about the evolution of nursing and the role of women from the mid 19th century all the way up to the 20th century. So, Florence Nightingale, she was born in the 1920s to a well-to-do English family. Um, she had a pretty privileged upbringing and she received a pretty comprehensive education and she also had the opportunity to travel quite a bit. But at 31, she decided to make the decision to embark on her nursing training despite um, her family's wishes for her to not do that. Now, in 1954, the Crimean Wars broke out, and um, the Crimean Wars proved to be pivotal in um, Nightingale's career. She ended up being taxed, tasked by the in British government to organize nursing care for um, a military hospital in Turkey. See, while in this role, though, Nightingale, she faced quite a few challenges, um, but she overcame them, and in overcoming them, she elevated the reputation of nurses, and she also challenged long-standing pre prejudice against women in professional roles. So after the war was over, um, Nightingale's achievements and her influence, they didn't wane, they continued. So after she returned to England, she took on the task of founding the country's first training school for nurses. And beyond that, she also contributed in terms of um, writing several books that explored healthcare concepts and best practices in nursing education. So clearly, Florence Nightingale has made quite a few contributions to the field of nursing, but let's talk about a few more of them. She also and emphasized um, the need for personalized patient care. She set the standards for hospital management 
and she championed nursing as a reputable profession for women. Um, she also initiated formal nursing education, which we talked about earlier. She highlighted how nursing is different from medicine. And um, she emphasized that there are two different disciplines. Um, she also emphasized the importance of nutrition for overall health. Additionally, that's not all she did. She also prom promoted um, therapeutic activities for her patients. And she pushed for continued education for nurses. And so clearly she did a lot. And I think well, another thing she did, before I forget, another thing she did was that she maintained records that became the foundation for nursing research. So very important. She did quite a bit. Now, there are a few other people, important people for us to know in terms of the early development of nursing. First up is Clara Barton. Um, she volunteered to tend to and feed Union soldiers during the Civil, Civil War. Um, she later supervised nurses for the Army of the James, and she coordinated hospitals and um, their nursing staff at the, at the Army of the James. However, she's best known for founding the American Red Cross, which is still around today. Then we have Dorothea Dix. Dorothea Dix was a pioneering figure in the movement for the humane treatment of the mentally ill and for prison reform in the United States. During the Civil War, she was also the superintendent of the female nurses of the army, which meant that she was responsible for recruiting and equipping the army's nurses. And we also have Mary Elizabeth Mahoney. She was the first African-American to graduate from a school of nursing. However, her contributions went beyond just her own personal achievements, but she also worked really hard to um, break down the barriers, the racial barriers in nursing. Okay, on to questions. So, which of the following best describes Florence Nightingale's view on the relationship between nursing and medicine? Make sure to pause the video to answer. And I'll tell you the answer in five, four, three, two, one. C, the answer is C. Nursing is separate and distinct from medicine. If I remember, it was one of her contributions um, saying that, hey, nursing and medicine are not the same thing. They're distinct disciplines. Next question. Who has recognized further efforts in advocating for the humane treatment of the mentally ill and championed reforms in mental health institutions during the 19th century. And I will be telling you the answer in five, four, three, two, one. And the answer is B, Dorothea Dix. Um, Dorothea Dix was a strong advocate for the humane treatment of the mentally ill and she played a key role in prison and um, mental asylum reforms. Okay, next question. Which of the following contributions is not associated with Florence Nightingale? I'll tell you the answer in five, four, three, two, one, B. Founding the first medical school for doctors. She did not found the first medical school for doctors. What she did was she established the first training schools, the first training school for um, nurses, not a medical school for doctors. Uh, last question. Which of the following individuals is best known as the founder of the American Red Cross? And I'll be telling you the answer in five, four, Three, two, one, and the answer is C, Clara Bar Barton. Um, Clara Barton founded the American Red Cross. 
Okay, so the next section. Um, the next section is on the development of nursing from the 19th to the 21st century. So we won't have a quiz this section because um, you're unlikely to be tested on the information in this section. However, it is still important information to have and to know. Um, so let me just give you some context about where we are right now. So Florence Nightingale's work and um, the care that nurses provided during the Civil War has highlighted the need for educated nurses in the United States. Um, as nursing schools emerged, they were more like apprenticeship, apprenticeships, though. So the hospitals would be provided with controlled, um, budget-friendly staff. The issue with this, though, is that it blurred the lines between education and service. So let's look at World War II. So World War II was actually was transformative for nursing. Um, as women began to work outside of the home, there was a notable shift for women towards independence and assertiveness. So, so much so that the war itself expanded the roles of nursing. This was partly due to the war, but also due to advancements in medicine and technology that came about during this period. As a result of the war, there were determined efforts made to improve how nurses were taught. Um, and the ways they did this was they, they sought to elevate the standard and the scope of nursing education. So if we fast forward today, nursing achievements has improved in all areas. Um, in fact, the American Association of, Association of Colleges of Nursing, the AACN, um, says that nursing has improved so much that it's important for us to realize that although nurses work collaboratively with other fields like medicine, um, nurses are not just meant to, are not assistants to medicine or assisting any other fields really. Instead, nurses operate independently of, and they're not assistants to medicine um, or any other discipline like some may have you believe. Another important insight from the AACN can be found in their vision um, for nursing education. The AACN envisions that nursing education would not only be focused on clinical proficiency, but also on fostering diversity, equity, and inclusion, on embracing technology, forming academic partnerships, and, uh, uh, and um, on advocating for continuous learning. Okay. Now let's discuss the more modern view of nursing. So traditionally, nurses were seen as caregivers for the for the sick and elderly. However, today's nurses nursing roles um, have evolved quite a bit. So organizations like the International Council for Nurses, the ICN, and the American Nurses Association, the AN and the ANA um, have broadened the idea, the, the definition of nursing to include autonomous care, health promotion, illness prevention, advocacy, and research. So nursing nowadays is so much more involved than it was during the Civil War, during World War II. Nurses now, nursing nowadays focuses a lot more on, on holistic patient care. That includes their physical needs, but also their emotional and social needs. Alrighty, thank you for watching part one of chapter one. Please come back for part two. Leave me a comment about what you found helpful about this video, what you would like to see added in the future. Let me know what you're thinking. Leave me a like, subscribe. It lets me know that you like this kind of video and that I should keep making more. Please comment. Please let me know. I need your feedback. All right. Bye. Hope this was helpful.